The supergrid will be the single largest construction project ever undertaken in the EU. We're looking to build one of the world's largest and most sophisticated energy networks. And we're looking to build it at sea. These are both enormous and complex undertakings that have never been attempted before. And we have to do them simultaneously. I envisage that from 2010 to 2020, we're going to be learning how to do this, how to build uh, these grids and, and these new power stations for ourselves. The thinking work has to be done before we can actually get out and build this in practice. We right now have to start thinking in terms of how our children and our grandchildren are going to have electricity and other sources of energy by 2050. We can build the European supergrid by 2050, but there's a lot to be done in a very short time scale, and we need to begin the groundwork now. There are seven key steps to delivering the supergrid. Ports, logistics, construction, generation, transmission, governance, and finance. The vast modular wind farms that will power the supergrid can't be put in place until we design and build revolutionary new port developments. For offshore wind, you need training facilities for personnel, dedicated terminals for the operators. That is not a container or normal trade port, that is a special port just for the industry, special craneage. And you need, of course, because you have heavy duty and you have heavy loads, you need a special paving and the layout of the port has to be special. A new generation of ship needs to be designed, financed and put in place to construct and support the supergrid. I strongly believe that the vessels are the bottleneck over the next 10 years. And you need to have industrialized equipments which have enough crane capacity, deck space, enough accommodation, which are self-propelled, fast, which have a dynamic positioning system, and which can jack up themselves, that you have a safe stand in the seabed. Constructing the supergrid in the remote waters of the North Sea is a complex engineering task, and it will require a whole range of revolutionary technologies. To install all this capacity within the next 10 years, this technology has to be improved. Industrialized vessels, better turbines, improvement on foundation, and improvement on the whole logistic chain. And beside that, bring more efforts in in research and development to get new technologies on the market and test them meanwhile that we have an answer for the years after 2020. The supergrid must harness unprecedented quantities of power in a harsh offshore environment. This requires a complete rethink in turbine design. We see a need uh, for a new offshore wind turbine to reduce cost, improve reliability. Essentially, it's a turbine which will strip out many of the main components, including the gearbox, and deliver a simple voltage source type solution. One of the most exciting challenges that lies ahead is the design and delivery of offshore floating wind turbines, which would allow us to build much further out at sea and avail of the higher wind speeds that are out there. The supergrid will integrate the EU's energy infrastructure, creating one united electricity market. But first, Europe needs to improve its existing transmission grid. To deliver an offshore supergrid by 2020, we're going to need new offshore platforms, new cables and converter technology. The platforms, we've learnt a lot of lessons through our work with AC systems in the last few years. We're going to need many more of them. Uh, cables, we need new factories. There just aren't enough cable factories in the world to deliver the quantity that we require. The converter systems, the technology is very scalable, and certainly we've got no problem in delivering that. What we really need is the skilled engineers to design those systems and make them work. To build an offshore supergrid, we require a new generation of DC technology. The classic systems that we have in use at the moment uh, are good for taking power from a strong network to another strong network. Uh, the voltage source technology that we're introducing now allows us to gather power from wind farms spread across the North Sea, collect it together and ship it to where it's really required. 
Right now, every EU state has its own regulator. The supergrid will create a single market for electricity with one integrated system. The integration of the markets is becoming a fact. But to let them work together, we will need a lot more standardization on European level. I think NSOE, a new TSO organization, can play an important role in that. In this increasing complexity of the markets and, and also bigger markets, Corezo will play the role of control tower to assess the security of the European network, uh, not only on national level, but on, on a broader regional level. To deliver the supergrid, Europe's governments, energy industry and financial community must make some major investment decisions. In the next well, 10 to 12 months, we really need to get clear assumption, magnitude of costs and where the money could come. And to foresee also that the EU puts its uh, part in the financing of this supergrid it, from the next financial perspective. So we need really to, to calculate the real costs and also how to spread between different participants. The supergrid will be built on a new spirit of pan-European cooperation, the commitment of the EU and the EIB, and the vision of the energy sector. Working together, they can ensure that Europe's supergrid is fully operational by 2050. By 2015, we need an EU business plan to finance our ports and vessels, and we need a new offshore transmission system operator. By 2020, our ports and vessels must be in place. Between 2020 and 2050, we need to construct the supergrid network and build 40,000 megawatts of offshore wind each year, so that by 2050, you and I, and consumers all over Europe, will be plugged into the supergrid network. The greatest challenge uh, facing Europe uh, is to be able to supply ourselves with basic energy and to accomplish that in a way which uh, reduces carbon dioxide emissions uh, by 80% from their 1990 levels. The world and Europe is on a once-off transition to sustainability. And that's a big challenge. It's never had to be done before. We've built this world of ours on fossil fuels. And now we have to unbuild it and do it uh, in a race to the future by 2050. We must not minimise the undertaking that lies ahead, but the prizes far outweigh the challenges. Zero emissions from power generation. Access to an infinite resource. Freedom from fuel price volatility. Security of supply. A powerful single electricity market. And the greatest prize of all, an energy independent Europe by 2050.